Hi, Ting. Hi, Ting. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Welcome to How Do You Like That? Today's topic is about new genes. And um, James, can you talk and introduce new genes today? <laughs> that, no, you, you're supposed to be the... <laughs> All right, I'm going to do it. So New Jeans is a new Korean girl group that debuted this August to much fanfare in South Korea and the rest of the world. There are five members in this group, Minji, Danielle, Hedin, Heyin, and Hani. Well, the topic, the question that we wanted to focus on is, did Cookie hurt or, um, I'm sorry, what was the question, James? Can you talk about it? Sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, so the topic of the show is Cookie. Did it add hype or hurt their attention? The reason why we are asking the question as to whether or not Cookie had added hype or hurt their attention, meaning their fame or their success, is because there was a controversy surrounding Cookie and the lyrics. And the controversy was centered around the fact that um, the word cookie was a double entendre. So I want to say at the outset that I initially didn't have a problem with the song, Cookie. It was only when I was, it was alerted to me that there was a double entendre. But I, I guess nevertheless, it came out. Um, it became an issue. Um, it caused a stir. Yes. Without a doubt, it caused a stir within the K-pop world there were some fans that took objection to this to the point where they were making strong comments about how they felt that it was wrong because having suggestive lyrics in pop music is definitely nothing new we oftentimes bring up new wave groups and like one of the groups that we definitely were fans of was bow wow wow their biggest hit i want candy she's not talking about candy that she just actually wants candy candy is a double entendre okay i'm really naive because i've just learned that right now are you serious okay i'm not joking i what you did not know that i want candy is not about a, a, an adult woman who wants candy i well, that, want candy well she's not saying candy stick i mean Do you need <laughs> the stick in there to get I mean, it could i mean be drugs too i mean i don't know but you, it's about I mean, okay. it's about a male part of the a male anatomy. Oh, I Isn't don't it? know. <laughs> I, I okay. Well, wow. Well, okay. I okay, mean, well, I, suffice it the... to say, maybe I brought up a bad example with "I Want Candy," but I thought it was a no-brainer. I thought everybody knew that that was a double entendre. I mean, I see. That's the thing about the 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 um, cookie. Also, I mean, I, I think maybe cookie is much more suggestive. My biggest barrier to understanding K-pop songs is that I don't speak Korean fluently. So I oftentimes just tune out the lyrics. And when they go into the English words, oftentimes the English words are just thrown in there. Half the time, they don't even use the English words correctly. They're just throwing things in there that sound good. They're little sound bites. So mm -hmm. for all I know, cookie doesn't mean anything. The last thing I was doing was, oh, here's the new New Jeans debut. Let me analyze the lyrics to see if there's anything untoward or sexually explicit in here. I don't do that as my first reaction to right. a song. I just saw yeah. the video. I saw the visuals. Okay. Cause that's, the, that's the first thing I do. I oftentimes watch the music video. I, the MV, I don't go to iTunes first, or I certainly don't buy an LP and put it on my stereo and put the, you know, record on or, or a CD. It's all coming to me via the internet. And so I'm watching the MV right away. I'm like, Whoa, this is freaking K-pop visuals on a level that I don't see very often. It's not like the K-pop industry is not accustomed to delivering us stellar visuals that just make your jaw drop, you know? Mm -hmm. That's what they do. But because they're doing it so often and they're rehashing and they're copying each other so much and they're just doing the same thing over and over again, you can sort of like be blah, even if it's really actually a ton of money and a lot of pizzazz and a lot of visual effects or whatever, a lot of graphics and a lot of costuming and a lot of makeup and super pretty or handsome idols. But this one. If you want it, you can get it. If you want it, Nemo, sorry, it'll do the job, boy. Six and an upside. Honestly, it jumped out 
of the screen at me. And I was like, whoa, this is this looks sophisticated. This looks really stylized. It looked fresh. It looked different. And it looked appealing. The idols. It was like pretty girl version of Stormtroopers. It was so uniform looking. It was like they manufactured them from a human Barbie doll factory. They were stunningly beautiful, like the kind of beautiful that you just feel like this is unfair. The world, this world should not have a group like this. This is not right. This is un, this is not a level playing field for so everybody else. So the visuals else. were a cut above even by K-pop standards. Oh my God, to other, even yeah. by K-pop standards, one just had to sit there and go, wow. Okay. And then the stunning. style and then the production design and everything they're pumping into it and the music. I was like, this doesn't sound like the same old stuff that I've been hearing that I hear like I can go I can take five girl groups five girl groups and find a song then in each one of them that pretty much sounds like the other one's song And it's kind of the same, right? This seemed like you got me looking for attention. They're from a different decade or different era, different generation. They're like fifth gen or something. It's just like a whole different deal. I was honestly kind of blown away. Do you think the controversy arose mainly because of the youth of the girls? So if they were older, like 20. One, 22, 23. Where does the controversy come from besides that the lyrics are very suggestive? Is it paired with the fact that there are young girls? If the girls were older, might not this have been a controversy? It is related <clears throat> to the larger Min Hee Jin controversy and this feeling that her concept behind New Jeans was kind of glorifying a kind of Lolita type of image mm -hmm. of young girls and and that kind of thing. And and I think Cookie exacerbated that because of the sexual undertone of the lyrics that they may or may not have intended. You know, if they didn't release Cookie or if Cookie was, you know, written in such a way that didn't have such um, strong sexual undertones, then maybe it would have blown over e more, more easily. But uh, I think the two of them together, I think they definitely, I think that was kind of what caused the stir, really. I think both but, of those together. But if they didn't have Cookie, do you think these girls are just so young, too young by itself? Is that a problem? I mean, that's a larger question. Okay. Um, it sounds mm -hmm. to me like, Donna, you think that regardless of Cookie being one of their songs, there was already a problem going on with the group, that they were presented to us as these Lolitas these young girls who are super sexy. Is uh, that what you mean by that? No, I, I'm i just saying that that is the nature of the Min Hee Jin controversy, that people were critical of the image of sexualized girlhood. So it sounds to me like you're saying that, but take Cookie off of the, pretend Cookie didn't even happen. Because in my opinion, the whole problem resides with the song Cookie. And the okay. one part of the lyric that is using the word cookie as a double entendre for mm -hmm. a part of the female anatomy that we're not gonna use the word for. But if you don't mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about, I just go to mm -hmm. Google and quickly Google it and you'll find it. The only reason we're not gonna talk about it is we don't wanna say the word on camera, but it should be obvious what part of the female anatomy the word cookie was being used to be a double entendre for. There are songs out there by right. Doja Cat and Cardi B that use That's Cookie right. in that explicit Goes way. all the way back to Little Richard. Or Little Richard's lyrics are incredibly sexually suggestive. That yeah. was one of the biggest problems that white America had with Well, black, yeah, what do you think early, rock and roll means? Exactly, or jazz. Or jazz, means, yeah. Exactly, oh, so white Americans historically have had a resistance to African-American music because of the uh, sexually explicit nature of the lyrics. Eventually over time, they let go of that because it was unstoppable and everybody over time acclimated to it. I had an auto body shop guy tell me that his 
he, I mean, I guess he figured out that I was Korean. I can't remember, but he was telling me how his daughter likes K-pop. And at that time I was far from appreciating K-pop to me, like K-pop was just like, ugh, you know, and I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And he said, <clears throat> I said, I don't really like this music. And he's like, yeah, but I'm glad my daughter likes it because I don't want her listening to all this gangster rap and you know all this all these songs where the lyrics are hardcore sexually explicit there's a lot of misogyny in the lyrics tons of violence about uzis and shooting people he was like i really like the fact that my daughter's listening to this k-pop music because there's no negative things going on in the lyrics that i object to now i don't know what would he say if he knows what new jeans is and hears the lyrics and goes oh what's going on now um it's definitely a different level than what has been historically um, K-pop being known for. Well, first of all, this is a really common, it's not It's not unique to New Jeans. Um, I mean, this happened to Ive as well. I think every rookie debut, especially girl groups, they this weekly? it always Did comes it under weekly? this. Uh, well, After Weekly school? was not as overtly sexual, so I think people were fine with Weekly. Twice? But when Venpara came up, that's when people started criticizing them. Same with Ive. I think Ive's 11, their debut song, go back and look. People did criticize them for being too sexual. So it's not unique at all. I of mean, course. this kind of, every girl group is going to come under this lens. But wouldn't you agree though, that the criticism that prior K-pop girl groups have come under scrutiny for pales in comparison to, for what they did, pales in comparison to what was done with new jeans and cookie that this song represents something that is a somewhat of an outlier in that regard yes we can comb through all of the girl groups through the history of k-pop and say oh look at exits ex exit songs up and down that's sexually explicit to me yeah those... i totally agree with you james i think the combination of cookie and the min hee jin controversy did push this to a level um, by the where... way why do you call it the min hee jin controversy as if she is is it because a lot no? of people have of criticized Min Hee Jin directly, and actually in in such a way where they've criticized her direction of New Jeans, and then in some ways they've kind of felt like, oh, it's not New Jeans's fault; it's actually Min Hee Jin's fault that they've right. gone I, in this I, direction. I, I was I succumbed to that at first too, but as I thought about it more, I wondered to myself, why are we blaming her solely? I mean, is she the only one that had power and decision making? How is Bang Shi Hyuk completely innocent in this situation? He is the one who founded the company and I would imagine has final say so on everything. I can't yeah, imagine but that he this didn't sign is off her on this. vision. I mean, New Jeans is her thing. It's her vision. It's under her Adore label. But doesn't Bang Shi Hyuk have veto power over her vision? Anybody who works for him, he hires and instructs them to what to do. I don't understand why we are solely blamed. Why she, it feels like a witch hunt. I, I'm not saying that she's innocent. Well, it is it's her very vision. possible that it was it completely her brainchild. She came up with this and she fought to make this happen. It's possible. But do we have proof of that? Do we have evidence well, of that? Okay. I see what you're saying. Yes. I mean, this is all endemic of K-pop in general. I mean, it is a it's a commercial industry. Min Hee Jin, of course, is you can't. And you can't um, criticize her in a vacuum. Well, I think the sexualization of females in K-pop, that's been going on for a long time. I think that started back in second gen, actually. I think there's certain groups that they already started this. And in some ways, it was very liberating. That's been you going mean, on for a while. compared to the while. sexualization of females in Trot? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, um, yes, sexualization yes. of females in the K-pop industry is basically just doing what all Everybody, entertainment yeah, exactly. industry has been doing to females. Well, that song, so obviously. to go back to your question, James, about did it hurt or hype? I think overall it didn't hurt them enough, obviously. They're incredibly yeah. popular. They weren't canceled. Uh, they weren't canceled. It was a Oh my God. Yeah. If this is canceling, then yeah, cancel no. me right now. Please, somebody cancel me. <laughs> so there are four songs. I mean, they all went... Most of them went. Two of their songs off. are in the top ten. Yes. Two yes. out of four. Yes. What, you have to go back to Blackpink, I think, to have a group that has that level of like success. It sounds like the two of you think that it didn't hurt them. Hey, I'm not gonna be the one to get hurt. No. I think overall, I, no. But I guess nobody... theoretically, it could have hurt them because Richard, their success could have been twice as much as it is right now. That's a good question. I, I mean, what just because they were really successful, Richard, does not mean that 
we could be looking because I think Blackpink was even more successful with their debut album than New Jeans, right? Possible. Well, you would know their, better, Donna. Their debut was very strong, right? Whistle I mean, and Boombaya. I think those right. were that. I think Blackpink's debut was more it was had a bigger Boombaya than than New Jeans did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I agree with you both. I don't think ultimately it hurt them to the extent that it, it canceled them or, or it, it, you know, they're still going to be successful for sure um, at this point, as long as they keep their momentum but, going. I mean, but objectively speaking, question is, I would have hurt. Because yeah, if, I, but if me, they I feel been twice like as successful. they could have had a perfect debut if they did not have this issue. Mm. And also, I will say, James, I do remember an earlier conversation where I was like, oh, I hate Cookie. It's the worst song. But you know what? I actually went back and listened to it. And it's actually not a bad song. But because I, I had that mm -hmm. negative impression, yeah, it, it colored my view of it. And how right. many other people are out there like me, you know, but thinking then, oh, they just wrote off the song. But oh. now... See, see in, in a sense, I think it did hurt them because probably mm. a lot of people just wrote off that song. Uh, Going back to an earlier mm. point you made, their visuals are so... I thought that they were unreal looking when I first saw them. It's a very interesting choice. They look similar. I mean, can, the long black hair and they all look very similar. As far as exploitation goes, I just want to yeah. bring up some examples in the past like linda mm -hmm. blair in the exorcist or mm -hmm. uh what's her name in pretty baby oh uh, brooke shields brooke shields she was highly sexualized in the movie pretty baby when she was a teenager so this is nothing new and yeah who, many the question is, had a picture of brooke shields that right? was one of so her the mm. question is is it, it was she just simply utilizing a tried and true tactic to garner mm. success because mm -hmm. I think there's more evidence that doing this will lead to success versus that it will hurt you in being successful. I mean, it's been, this is a very, this is a very old thing to do to exploit young women. If I had never even heard of all of that with the Menhejin controversy, if mm -hmm. I just seen their videos and no news came out about it, mm -hmm. I, I, I do like their look. It is fresh. And right? I really like the fact that they, I mean, their makeup, it's it's that no makeup look, you know, it's like they just are so beautiful that they mm. don't even need makeup. I mean, it's not obvious. Natural. Their makeup is pretty minimal and natural. Right. And and I like that because if you compare that to other girl groups, it's not like that. It's it's definitely more heavy makeup. It's very youthful. I think it's age appropriate. You know, they're styling. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part. I mean, that is what girls wear now. I would I say mean, it's even more than age appropriate. They're tapping into that generation's style and vibe. In I a mean, way that great, that, yeah. that K-pop groups have not yeah. yet done, they they are they are pioneering the new a new generation, I mean, not a new all girls now for Asian. better. Yeah, I mean, all girls now for better or for worse, they're wearing those crop tops and you know the baggy jeans and uh, baggy they're shorts. In or... society, right? Yeah. All right. So. Everyone, thank you for uh, joining us today for our episode on new jeans. We had a great time talking about this. Uh, it was an interesting episode. Hope to see you guys next time. And if you liked it, please subscribe. <laughs> yes, and yeah, like. Subscribe. Yeah.